and back by Mkhitaryan. He'll turn and break out for Arsenal. He's got Iwobi to his left. If he can find him, he does. Aubameyang is free at the far post. If Iwobi can pick him out, he has. And Aubameyang steers it into the bottom corner. Arsenal lead by a goal to nil after half an hour. Brought down by Danny Welbeck. Lovely bit of skill there to skip past his man into Aubameyang. Who laid off for Mkhitaryan. Arsenal have a man over here on the left-hand side. It's Alex Iwobi. Just checks his run. Cuts back inside. Eventually lays it off to Henrik Mkhitaryan. It's a good cross. And Danny Welbeck's there to head home. Arsenal double their lead just after the break. And it's Danny Welbeck with his second goal of the season. Here come Arsenal again. It's Henrik Mkhitaryan. Plays, looks for the 1-2 with Aubameyang, but Aubameyang doesn't give it back. Instead, he goes alone and finds the bottom corner. Arsenal 3, Vorskland 0, and surely now this game is done and dusted. Surely the Gunners are home and dry. Vorska have a free kick here in a wide area. It's put in by Rebenek, headed away by Holding. He'll be pumped back into the penalty area. Bit of a mix up here in the defense. Lichstein has let it go through his legs and Chesnikov scores for Vorskla. A fine finish, but Arsenal still without a clean sheet this season. We've almost had the allocated three minutes of stoppage time. Surely this is the last move of the game. Vorskla have the ball out in a wide area. It's cut back brilliantly. There's Sharpa finished expertly. And Vorskla have a second consolation of the night. It's Arsenal 4, Vorskla 2. And that will be the final kick of the game as the referee blows the full-time whistle. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna. I'm your host, Harry Simiou, and this show is brought to you by loserpool.com. Be sure to check them out. Uh, our preview for the Everton game is a little late this week, um, as I explained on Twitter, because we thought we'd combine it with a review of the FC Vorskla game in the Europa League, as you probably gathered by the intro. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk FC Vorskla and we're going to look ahead to the visit of Everton this coming Saturday. So Arsenal 4, FC Vorskla, Poltava of the Ukraine 2, um, our fourth win on the bounce. And as you can tell, I've been practicing my commentary, uh, putting together a few demos for a few job applications here and there. Uh, so I thought, who better to test it out on than uh, my loyal listeners? So guys, let me know what you think of it. Tweet me at Chronicles underscore AFC. All your feedback is appreciated, both good and bad, of course. Um, so yeah, Arsenal's fourth win on the bounce. I thought Unai Emery made some very good decisions going into this game. I'm sure people were surprised to see certain players included. I thought the inclusion of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang was a masterclass, if I'm being honest. I think it's been quite obvious that he hasn't quite hit top form yet this season. Needed goals, needed confidence, and he got exactly that. I know we weren't playing the strongest of opponents, but scoring goals is a habit. It's a mindset. And so to get into that rhythm it is a good thing. And it's definitely needed when you're playing in that position. Um, of course, he was taken off in the second half as well. So he won't have been too exhausted. I don't think that was his most difficult match either. So uh, I'm sure Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang will be in, in fine form going into Sunday's game against Everton. Lucas Torreira got some more game time under his belt. Um, I must admit, when I saw him included in the team sheet, I was pleased. But at the same time, in the back of my mind, I was slightly worried that maybe this meant he wouldn't play against Everton at the weekend. But seeing as he was taking off so early, I don't think that will make a difference in Emery's thinking. I think if Emery it is to start him on Sunday. I think this was just to get a bit more sharpness and a bit more match fitness under the Uruguayans belt. I liked the way he was very busy, particularly in the first half. I thought he was involved in pretty much every Arsenal move. I know we didn't create a great deal until the half hour mark when we scored, but he was constantly looking for a forward pass, constantly getting the ball off the centre backs and often dropping in between them um, to sort of go and collect the ball, which was, of course, Nice to see. I thought Sogradis uh, had another good game, albeit against a very weak opponent. And I don't think he was tested in any way, but he just seems to be coming into his own. The more he plays in an Arsenal shirt, 
the more dominant he's starting to look. Um, in the second half, I actually moved seats. I went to go and uh, sit with my dad sort of around about on the halfway line, just behind the dugouts, whereas I usually sit in the North Bank. So I had a completely different viewpoint for the first half uh, and the, sorry for the second half. And I ended up looking sort of directly at our back line and, and looking at how organized they were at times. You know, Socrates encouraging players when and, and how much to step forward. And it seemed like we held a really, really good line. Unfortunately for us, we switched off at the end. Um, and, and, you know, we're still without a clean sheet. So that was a negative. And although we won the game and the game was done and dusted by that point, it's still really, really pissed me off to be honest um I was absolutely furious when we allowed Vorsklad to, to score particularly the first goal which was such a poor piece of defending just the ball was in the air Welbeck challenged for it it fell down Licksteiner seemed to get the ball caught in his feet and before you knew it um I think it was Chesnikov who who got hold of the loose ball and fired it past Bern Leno who in in fairness had no chance um the second Vorskla goal was was the final kick of the game but again it was frustrating you know it looked like Guendouzi didn't track his runner and I'm not picking on the lad because again I thought he looked good when he came on uh, but you know it just goes to show about the agendas certain Arsenal fans have you know because had that been Granit Xhaka not tracking back we'd have never heard the end of it but it was Matteo Guendouzi so we're not really uh, we're not really speaking about it which I think is a little unfair. Bernd Leno uh, it particularly in the first half, showed he's far more comfortable than Petr Cech with the ball at his feet. And there were points where I thought this lad's showing off chips. And, and there was times where he'd play a pass to the centre-back and pull out towards the corner flag as if to, to make the option for the return pass. So, you know, it's quite clear that if Unai Emery does want to play this way, that, that Bern Leno is more suited to it. It's very hard to make a judgment call on a goalkeeper that we've seen once, um, I'm not including pre-season, but we've seen once in a competitive fixture against a team of farmers, to be honest, um, with all due respect. Now, I just want to highlight a couple of uh, the comments Unai Emery made post-match in his press conference. Uh, going back to that decision to start Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, he was asked to talk about Aubameyang's two goals and what it will do for his confidence. Now, Emery had this to say, our mindset today was to take confidence for our players and to give players chances to play because we're going to play a lot of matches. It's clear we want to score and the players who need to score like Aubameyang, Welbeck and Ozil will take this confidence. It will be good. They did a lot of quality things in the game. He was also asked about the lack of clean sheets. Now, he said, we are speaking before each match about having the mentality to not concede easy chances. Today was a good opportunity not to concede goals. But the last 20 minutes, we need to do better on this competitive aspect. Uh, then asked to comment on Torreira and Leno's performances. He had the following to say, Lucas played well. He is playing with passion in his performance. Each minute he plays, he does very well. Leno, it was his first match. Also, we conceded two goals, but not from a mistake from him. For him, he got minutes in the game and he can take confidence to also because he's continuing to play matches in the next week. Um... Emery was also asked actually about the empty seats in the Emirates Stadium because there was a lot of them. I'd be surprised if there were more than, say, 35,000 there last night, which is quite disappointing. Uh, but also, I've got to say, it's understandable given the opponent. You know, there are a lot of games. There are four home games in a row coming up and, and people probably just can't get to every game and decided to sacrifice this one. So... I'm not going to throw my toys out of the pram about that. You know, I've, I've seen certain people moaning about it on social media. I don't think it's that big a deal. I think it's the same sort of at lots of clubs. It's not a problem exclusive to Arsenal, particularly when the game is televised. Um, but yeah, going back to that, Unai Emery was asked about it. He said, we need to show our supporters we are excited for this competition. We want to do good in this Europa League. It's step by step. And I'm sure they will come little by little here with us. But also it is our work to bring them here. Um, so, yeah, uh, there was a little bit of a concern in the first half. Lucas Torreira went down holding his leg. 
Um, and I must admit, it looked quite bad at the time. He was rolling around in agony. And I was concerned that maybe he wouldn't be fit for the weekend. Uh, Emery was asked about it. He said he got two hits on his leg. I hope tomorrow and Saturday he is good to be okay for Sunday. So uh, it remains to be seen whether Lucas Torreira will be fit enough to start against Everton this coming weekend. Moving on now to Sunday's game, I thought I'd take a quick look at Everton's results this season so far. Uh, they started the season with a 2-2 draw uh, away at Wolves, which is not a bad result given that it was Wolves' first Premier League game um, since their return and obviously the buzz around the place was, was great. They then beat Southampton by two goals to one before being held to a draw by Southampton's South Coast rivals Bournemouth. Um, then they were held by Everett, uh, sorry, by Huddersfield, which was disappointing at Goodison Park. You know, it's a game they would have been expected to win. Um, and then the last result was a disappointing defeat at home to West Ham, who had yet to, to pick up any points this season. So it's been a mixed bag for Everton, in my opinion. You know, I guess overall, it's not been a great start to the season. Marco Silva is somebody that they wanted to get in for quite a long time. He's failed to really get things going just yet. Everton have had two players sent off so far in their five Premier League games. So there's obviously disciplinary issues there. Um, but one of those players, Richarlison, who was sent off up at Bournemouth, returns this weekend. Now, he's been a bright spark for Everton this season when he has featured. So he's a player that will, will cause us some problems. The only thing I'd say about Richarlison is, is he's the kind of player who tends to play for a short period of the season before going missing and, and hibernating through the winter. Um, that's what he did back at Watford anyway. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was to happen again. But they've done some good business this summer. Uh, Dina, the fullback, has come in. Richarlison, Bernard. Uh, so some interesting players there. They already had some decent players in and around the place. It won't be an easy game, but I do fancy Arsenal to win it, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, I haven't seen much from Everton so far this season to say that they've improved a great deal under Marco Silva. And and that surprises me because he's a manager I rate very highly and I've defended on the Sofa Sports podcast many, many times over the past couple of years or so. So, so uh, yeah, I've, I expect more from him, to be honest. Uh, my prediction is going to be Arsenal 2, Everton 0. I think that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, my predicted lineup would be Petr Cech in goal. I think Bayerin will come back in at right back. Socrates and Mustafi will make up the defensive uh, pairing. And then Monreal will slot in at left back. I think Granit Xhaka will play. I think Lucas Torreira will play if he's deemed fit enough. But I think there's a little bit of concern around those knocks he took uh, in last night's game. So I wouldn't be surprised if Matteo Guendouzi gets the nod again. Uh, I think then it will be Ozil, Ramsey, Aubameyang and Lacazette. Uh, let us know your predictions. Let us know what you think. Uh, tweet us at Chronicles underscore AFC. The podcast is also now available on YouTube. So if you're a YouTuber, do subscribe to our channel. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, of course. FNX, Acast, uh, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Now, as always, I'm going to pick my uh, team to lose in the Premier League this weekend in association with our sponsors, Loserport.com. Check them out. It's a fantastic game. Uh, it's a concept that's turned betting on its head rather than picking the winner. You're picking the loser. Um, it's, it's a fantastic bit of fun and you can play with your friends and against your, your colleagues and whatever you prefer. Uh, just looking at the Premier League fixtures, it was between a couple for me. Um, I fancy Huddersfield to lose at Leicester, but I also fancy Southampton to lose at Liverpool. Um, in the end, I decided to go with Southampton. I think they're going to get beat. And, and of course, I can't pick the teams that I've previously picked in this round. Uh, so, yeah. Southampton is my choice this week. Thank you once again for listening to the Chronicles of Aguna. Just hold on just another second or so and you'll be able to hear uh, an introduction to Loser Paul for those of you who are thinking about getting involved. Meet our hero. He's a smart guy who loves sports and loves outwitting other people. Our hero needs to show the world his mastery of the game. Our hero does this by playing games at Loserpool. Our hero 
is you. Loserpool has two games. In the namesake, the games of an entire season are grouped together into weeks or rounds. After paying an entry fee, you choose one team to lose that week or round. If you're correct, you earn the right to repeat the process in the next round. But the catch is that you cannot choose a team a second time until all the teams have been chosen by you once. If you're knocked out early, you may re-enter the same pool by paying a penalty to make it fair for the other players. Or you may wait until the next pool starts in a few weeks. Razor Pool is similar to Loser Pool in that the games of an entire season are grouped together. But in this case, you pay the entry fee and predict the outcome of all the games in that week or round. You will be ranked against all other players according to your accuracy. And at the end of each round, a predetermined percentage of players will be eliminated. There is no option to buy back into a pool if you are eliminated, <laughs> and so you will have to wait until the next pool starts to play again. In both games, the prize money grows very rapidly. The pool is allocated to the last man standing, or to add a little drama, to a small surviving group if they vote according to predetermined rules. Loser Pool is about community, friendship, fun and rivalry. Discuss and debate the games and events of the week with players from around the world. Invite your friends and co-workers into your own sub-pools and see who can outsmart the group and earn bragging rights. This is your moment. Create an account. Show your sports genius. Be the hero.